I think the idea of a work-life balance pretty much goes out the window as soon as you embark on making a documentary film. You're going to need to find other ways to integrate those two things. And I think it's really important that we share this message because it can be a real barrier for people who are trying to get into the industry, but they think that it's not really suited to their lifestyle because it's inconsistent work or because it can be quite challenging to find the funding when you're first getting started. Yeah. So a really big way to just keep that momentum and keep things happening is just to adapt your filmmaking to your lifestyle. Yeah, that's right. So I think you need to think about those things that are negotiable and non-negotiable. And there are some things that you just have to deal with in your life. So I know you and I have kids and we've taken our kids to far-flung shoots many times. You know? I, I started travelling yeah. with our kids when they were six weeks old and it was challenging. But I did it and, you know, it's not easy. It's definitely not easy doing a long haul flight from Melbourne to Canada with a three month old baby and then getting off at the other end and filming. But you make it work. And I think that's what we mean by you've got to adapt things to your lifestyle. So if you're wanting to do documentary filming and you're planning to have a young family, it doesn't mean you have to stop. You just got to find ways to adapt the work to suit your lifestyle. Maybe the shoot days are more spread out. Maybe the shoot days are shorter. Maybe you need to hire nannies to travel with you. There's so many different options. We've just come off a production shoot this weekend, actually, which was a long weekend in our state, but was not a long weekend in the state where we were filming. And I remember we reflected after that, we said that was such a good experience actually doing production on a Sunday and on a public holiday um, in our state because we weren't getting interrupted with too many calls or emails and other things going on. So we could really focus on the public holiday. And on the Sunday, we were able to get material that we probably couldn't have got the same level of material on the shoot during the week. So it was actually a benefit working odd hours. It definitely was. And it actually meant the participant was available. They were really relaxed because it was Sunday. So they weren't trying to rush around to appointments or meetings or whatever else they had going on. Yeah. We got there a dedicated time and attention and it was, yeah, it was really relaxed and easy. Another thing I wanted to add to this, Sue, was I think a mistake that I made early on in my career was I'd, I'd be working on a location and I'd just go there and I'd get out as soon as I could on the earliest flight and spend the least amount of time on the ground. And as I go forward, I realise that's not worth doing for lots of reasons. Often when you travel like that, you just burn yourself out. You're so fatigued by the time you get back, you can't work anyway. But I think the, the other side to this is we are so lucky as filmmakers in terms of where we get to go in the world and what we get to experience. Try and build in a bit of downtime so you can actually get to see the place, get to know the people so that you can make the most of it because you may never get that opportunity again. That's right. And it, look, it is budget dependent, obviously, if you can afford to do that. But yeah, if you're going to travel all the way to a foreign country, you know, give yourself at least a day to experience it. And I think the other thing with adapting it to your lifestyle is, for example, we've got a shoot coming up for the US and so we're flying out on a Friday in Australia, we'll land late at night on a Friday in the US, but rather than starting work on the Saturday, we're not gonna start until the Sunday. And that's not so much for a day to, you know, a sightsee. It's more because we've got four connections and the chances of one of those going wrong and being delayed is pretty high because this is international travel. So we've got our 24 hour buffer so that we're not completely strung out and gonna miss our shoot. It's really tough to do this work when you're fatigued. You need to look after yourself. You need to pace yourself. You need to be switched on. You need to be able to think on your feet. It's really important that you do build in those times to just recuperate and prepare. So that's a bit about how to adapt filmmaking to suit your lifestyle. I mean, we didn't really touch on you might still have a day job and be doing this on your weekends. That's adjusting to your lifestyle. And then as you get more experience and you get more funding, you can work less on your day job and more on your filmmaking. And that transition might take a few years, but you will get there. So you just got to keep at it. And that's the whole thing with filmmaking, isn't it? It's tenacity. You just yep. got to keep going. So hopefully that's uh, helped you understand how you can make filmmaking work for your lifestyle. There's no rules. You set your own rules and, you know, enjoy it. <laughs>